shared mindfulness to diverse groups? So here's the thing. I don't think, I, I don't know exactly what you're saying. So how do I we think make it accessible to them that, they, that it's something that they... But it already is accessible. Right, this, this, is, right. this is my thing. It's, it's like, it's figure ground, right? Mm -hmm. It's the whole idea of, because what's, what's happening in so many um, people of, 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 uh, of African descent, part of what's happening for them is that there are contemplative practices everywhere. There's some that are in the Christian church, and how exactly. is that manifesting in the Christian church? There's some in, in the different kinds of religions, and many of which are indigenous religions that are connected, and there are contemplative practices in all of these things. But they don't look like yoga on the mat. They don't, exactly. look, they don't look like Vipassana Buddhism. They look different. And until we mutually begin to cultivate lenses that allow us to see that and to see the contemplative practices for where they are, then it'll be hard to create the connectivity. Of course people are in contemplative practices in all kinds of different ways and contexts. They just might not call it mindfulness. They might not call it yoga. They might not call it So what do they call it? They'll call it prayer. They'll call it the spirit. They'll call it uh, uh, all you know, you should get some other people who are more versed than I, they can tell you some of the other words and the other languages. It's right. about translation, right? The contemplative practice is there. It's just in a different form. And it's fundamentally an act of translation. It's an act of all of us sort of opening, you know, our, you know opening and shifting our lenses so that we begin to see where contemplation really is. And it becomes hard to say. It's, it's kind of like as long as, as long as, as in, you know, predominantly white affluent communities, we're sort of saying, we're gonna do yoga and mindfulness and we wanna get you people to come over here. That's gonna be a hard sell because some of us are never coming over there. That's right. Uh, because that's not a place where mindfulness So how do we grow. make it, you're the diversity king here, how do we make it that that is considered mindfulness and it's accepted like not, you've gotta to come to yoga and meditation over mm -hmm. here because this is what we think is the best thing for you. Right, well, now if you're gonna take me there, here's what you do. Why don't they come and say, you gotta come to my church. That's what I'm saying. And we're gonna come to my church, come to my temple. Come, <laughs> right. you know, you know, come, and, come and join me in my, in my, in my, my practice but of contemplation. But why is it not the other way? You see what I'm saying? Like it can be both, it, but it can be both No, ways. but that's what I'm saying. But why are people not wanting to go that way? Why is everyone wanting them to go yoga meditation way? Why is it not to the contemplative prayer meditation? prayer or church or oh, oh, song oh. or oh, that's because of dominance and structural inequality and that's because that's that's because that's what I want you to talk about oh yeah 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 oh yeah so why is that we, we you know both for societal and psychological re reasons we live in a world where there's all kinds of structural inequality where there are dominant ways of thinking that are oftentimes connected to culture and to race and gender and so on um, and that's part of what's real um, and we you know it's kind of like we think about mindfulness and something like that is somehow devoid of that cultural context, right? That we're doing, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a pathway to freedom. It opens up. It, I, remember, I remember having um, conversations with some of my early teachers. Um, and my wife and I, at one point, we, we were doing retreats, mindfulness retreats for African Americans. Yeah. And some people would sort of say, why do you do mindfulness retreats for African Americans? Just, it's just retreats for everybody, right? And I'm like, yeah. Shut up. Look, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like you're doing mindfulness retreats in the context of yoga. white, predominantly Jewish right. context in which you're picking this up. That's cool. But the, it's an illusion that somehow there, that context isn't shaping how you step into this practice. Right? Right. And it's not just, I mean, in the, and I'm talking about the U.S. now. By the same token, there's a cultural context everywhere in all the ways in which contemplation is happening and mindfulness is happening. And so... I think part of the answer to your question, how is it that we begin to build bridges and cross over, is very well, not much even build bridges and cross over. We accept that that's a form of mindfulness as well, yeah. or that's a f that's their form of, of doing something yeah. that they feel is your yoga. Yeah, well, exactly. And, right. And, and, and what I think is cool about that is that once that the reason I say cross over is that once that connection is made, I know tons of people in the in the in the black church who would love to come to a yoga session. Or a and why don't session. they? Right. And, and the reason they don't is because of the barriers that are sitting up there that are keeping people from seeing, particularly keeping the dominant people from seeing, oh, this is con contemplation and let me invite you. And by the same token, let me be willing to step into yours. It's, it's mutuality, right? Right. That's so we've got to accept everybody's form of contemplation. And it's hard to do because... Because everyone wants to think theirs is the best. That's right. And everyone wants to think theirs is the best. And, and they know they know, they know because they practice it that this is the one, but what that might not be for everybody. That's exactly right. 
And, and, and in addition to all of us being in our own camps wanting that which we know happens, there's this larger piece, the structural piece, which is, you know, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about mindfulness or anything else and I'm dealing with a, with a woman, Kylie, despite my, my enlightenment around gender right. because I'm a diversity guy, I know that I'm sitting in a place where it's kind of like, you know, Darden School, for example, you know, if you want to do this, come over and do it my way. If you don't want to do it, fine. <laughs> right. I'm going to be fine. And that's got to be dealt with, right? Because you can't genuinely invite across if you're sitting in that place of... I know better. I know better, and I got the place. And if you don't come, well, that's how it goes. So you, this, you is like a this is like really a form of mindfulness when you're thinking about it. Oh, hell yeah. Because, we, because you've got to be able to realize that yours is not the only way mm -hmm. to mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Whether it's yoga, meditation, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. there, there could be a different way that we've never thought of. That yeah. someone else is using yeah. and it doesn't have a name. Yes. There and will that's, be. I think, what you're talking about. Yes. And there, the, A, there is a, a way that we haven't thought about, and I don't know it and you don't know it. And we're not going to know it until we're together. We're going to create it. That's the thing that's exciting.